Hello, nice of you to join me again. It's a beautiful day here, and I hope it's a beautiful day wherever you're at. I'm going to do an oil painting today. It's a little bit bigger than my usual. My usual 16 by 20. This canvas is 24 by 36. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a painting with a trail coming through, maybe some woods, maybe some snow-capped mountains. A darker, a darker picture though with a darker sky. And uh, what I did was I loaded it up with a thin coat of liquid white. What that does is it prepares the canvas for a wet on wet technique, which I do. And everything blends right in on the canvas. You don't have to do it on your palette. So we can get started with this painting. It's already covered. I use a two inch brush. I put a thin coat of liquid white over the whole canvas all the way what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the same two inch brush I'm going to load up with some like fatal blue maybe a little bit of a mixture of oppression blue since we said we're going to make it a darker sky load it up on a two inch brush just like that We'll start out in the corners using crisscross strokes. That kind of gives you your most, your best effect for the sky. It gives you all that action that goes on in the sky. Loading it up again, the darker color. Come in this corner, do the same thing. Crisscross strokes. And as you get down towards the horizon, it's gonna get lighter like nature automatically you don't have to do anything on this wet on wet technique loading up some more paint some more darker color because we want that to pop in the corners this one here like i said it's a bigger canvas one that uh, i don't do too often so we have more to paint and more to fill in We just blend it in. Leave some white in there, that's okay. Because that's the way the clouds look in nature. We put some more dark here, blend it in here. Here and there and there and here. And we're gonna blend it in in a minute using the blender brush. And we'll get all those colors happening. I just wanna make it a darker, darker sky. If we have to come back in and make it darker, we can do that. Because it's our world. We can make it however we'd like. Now I'm going to take a blender brush. I'm going to start by coming down here in the white, liquid white we got on. And that picks up some of the color right away. And just blend it in. And I hope you can see that at home or wherever you're watching this at. How it does it. How it picks it up. Just makes it all happen. It grabs the clouds in the sky. And you got that look in the sky of the cloudiness. I'm gonna come over here and hang on to the canvas. Blend it in. This is where I change my stroke from crisscross the kind of a circular maybe the way maybe the way I want the sky to look pick up some darker color down here come right across just like that darker color up here since we said it was going to be darker leave some light color in there darker over here bring some of that dark color in here, there, lighter as it gets down to the horizon. Let's go back and forth. There, here, here, and there. You step back and you get a look at it and see if you like it or not. 
And I see some strokes up here that I'm uh, not really, it's not that, it's not the look that I'm looking for. I want to bring some more color across here. Make it look like some clouds, distant clouds are way off. I'm trying to create that illusion. That's what we're doing. And if you look in the sky, you always see all kinds of little things happening in the sky. You get a workout with this on your wrist. Just keep blending it in until you get that look that you want in the sky. I think just like that, just like that, just like that. Maybe over here I'm going to blend in just a little bit more. Get some more stuff, more action. More action happening up here. Just barely circular motions. All the way down. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe in our scene. I'm going to grab that two inch brush again. I'm going to load it up with some dark color. Maybe we'll have a pond in here. Maybe a, maybe a trail going to the pond. Or a little lake. I'm loading up with that Prussian blue color. Maybe I'm going to put some brown, Van Dyke brown, make it darker. I always think that's the way it looks. I'm going to come across pulling it from the outside to inside leaving a little light in the middle to where we think it might look. But it's got to be dark like this. It's got to be dark like this. Right where the water line would be. We can make it however big we want your world. Pulling it straight across. Do we not go on an angle? Oh, it looks like the paint is going off your canvas and we don't want that. Come in with darker right here. Darker right there. Who knows how far the the water line goes. Applying pressure. Because I want to get that look. I like that dark look. If you ever look at ponds or lakes. And if you look at them. If you look at them close enough. you'll see that it's almost a purple, a purple look to it right next to the, the shore or if you got mountains. And go straight across lightly, lightly, lightly. Just like that. Take away that little sharpness of where the water line is or the reflection. And you just want to reflect it up where you got it just like that. Maybe this piece here will come up here more. Go out, pull out to the middle. And if you start in here, you see a mark where you started. It's like painting. Okay, if that's basically what we want, and I think it is. So we're going to make a little mountain here in the back. Using that same purple color. That purple color is uh, like a phthalo blue. A lizarin crimson. Maybe a touch of midnight black, just to darken it. And we're just mixing it up, blending it, turning it over. Hope you can hear that. 
going to get a little roll of paint on the top right across there. And we're going to come in here and determine we're not going to have no clouds in this sky just because it, that cloudiness is already happening. And we're going to put in, because we want it to be darker, and we're going to put in maybe a mountain right here. Maybe one right there. All we're worried about is that top edge. All the rest, we're going to blend in and put the snow and whatever else. We want that top edge to be sharp. That's going to give you that determining look of what you're looking for in a mountain. Maybe just like that. Maybe it comes down. And it gets a little bit more rockier right there. That's okay if you shake your hand a little bit. Makes it more look like nature because nothing is perfect in nature. There's always angles and creases and trees that aren't perfect. Nothing's perfect in nature. Just scrape it off. Could have it come right down almost to the water line. Maybe this has got a little, another peak over here. That sharp edge is what we're looking at. We don't, want, we don't want it to be too straight because I don't think it's that way in nature. If you look at any mountains or any hills or they always got those where the rocks build up. We'll do a little bit more here. Maybe this runs right off. Right off and down here to maybe another. Maybe another smaller. Maybe another smaller little plateau. Just like that. Looks pretty good. When you're doing paintings, you don't want to be too critical on yourself. You got to go with it. Enjoy it. You can hear me scraping that in. I always step back and look at it. See how it looks with the sky. And some of the angles I got going on. It's okay to leave some of it dark in there too. Because that's going to pick up all the reflections and the angles of what it looks like in nature. Just wiping myself off here a little bit. Clean off that blender brush that we use for the sky. And we're going to come in and we're going to pull this down get the lay of the mountain. I call it always the lay of the land, but for this it's going to be the lay of the mountain. Where you want your angles to be. Maybe that comes out like that. Maybe it comes out. Maybe this comes down. Maybe that comes over there. Just pulling down lightly. Getting some of the excess off. Leave some of those breaks and everything that's happening in there. Hope you can see that. At home or wherever you're viewing this from. You notice what I did here is I put this mountain here. And I cut it down and push that one back automatically. I'm going to clean off the brush. I'm going to come back in here and blend some of this other mountain back in the distance. Just barely. This one we can take it as far as you want. Into wherever. We're going to come back in. We're going to tap that in with that blender brush and make it misty. After we put the snow in. That's what we're going to do now and I'm cleaning my brush off or my palette knife. And I'm going to pick up some titanium white. 
cut a roll right across the tip. And I'm going to come in and think of where the snow might be. Oh, looks like there's more lake coming from this angle right here from the way it's created. So I'm going to start right from up here and just tap it. Just tap it and let it take what it wants. Come right down. Clean it off and get a little bit more titanium white, maybe a little bit of liquid white. Tap it in there again. Just tap, tap, tap. Get the angle of the mountain how you want it. All the way down. Clean your brush off again, or your palette knife. I keep calling it a brush. Your palette knife. Maybe we can add some more snow. Maybe this peak comes over here. It's your world. You can make it however you'd like. Can I add some more color? More whites. Step back and maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe we can add a little bit more here to define it more. Just tapping. Trying to get that. Trying to create that illusion of where the snow might be, how it might look in nature. A little more, more roll of paint. Maybe in our world, since it's hitting there, it might be hitting right there. Just on that corner a bit. And this palette knife, you got a little edge right there. I'm going to take a little bit of the color, load it up, and where you have these small places, you can just tap it. And get that effect of the snow without using the big edge. That's always a good thing to know. That helps. Take a more white. And maybe this is maybe this is you can't see it and it's more in the shadows. Or maybe this part comes. It comes back into that one. It comes back and touches that one. And you step back, and what I see, I'm going to use that small edge. What I see is maybe this corner right here is getting some of that reflection off of that. And load some more. Little roll of paint. Maybe. Oh, who knows? Maybe on the top right there. Maybe it comes right down. Maybe it's got that kind of a look to it. Already. Already it looks like what I'm looking for. More paint. And what I see is I like to maybe add a little bit more in here. You want it to break. You want it to come down naturally. That natural look. I'm going to take the same weight and I'm going to add just a tad of phthalo blue. Just want to get a little bit of a shadow little shadow look but not not a lot because I'm really looking at this dark color that I like I leave it kind of marbly and maybe over here here and there just have it blend down what I did was I took a little bit 
off. I tapped it. You can pull it down from the weight. Because what I seen was that shadow color was a little bit too bright. And that's not the look I was looking for. And I might be doing that, just what I did just now, is I created this little ledge here. This edge that kind of pushes that up and push that back. And I'm going to take some color over here. I don't want a whole lot because I said I was going to leave. I was going to leave some of it white. And that's what I'm going to do. Highlight it just a little bit in that corner. The rest stays dark and that pushes that back. And you know what? I think that's perfect for me. And that's the way you want to do when you're looking at paintings. You always want to look at it and say, that's good, I'm going to quit. Because if you keep working on it, keep doing something to it, most of the time, with me anyways, I end up messing it up. The blender brush and start out the lay of the mountain and just tap. What we're creating is a misty, misty look to the base of the mountain. And the way it would look in nature. I want to keep that line down there, right up above the water, because that's the way it would look in nature. And you want to keep those separations, and that's a separation. That's a separation is the lightness in between your layers. And that comes right down. The lay of the land because you get the angles coming right down. Like it would look if it was in nature. And that's what we're trying to do. Here and there and there and here. And like I said, I'm going to knock off the paint. Since I like, like darker colors, I'm going to come in with the fan brush with that purple color and I'm going to darken it right by the horizon. Just going right across in the dark area. Because that is really the way it's going to look in nature. It's going to be dark. I'm just taking this fan brush and blending it in. Here and there and there and here. Kind of like that. Now I'm going to take the blender brush and pull down from there. Pull down for that edge. I want that edge to be a little misty back there. By pulling it down, you get a little bit of a reflection of water the water reflection that you're looking for. Just like that. You go right across. Right across. Right down. Who knows what's going on down here. Okay, we got that going on. And what I notice in nature is that in the dark water you'll have some things happening. Some pieces of like water reflection. I'm taking this fan brush and I'm just tapping back here. 
different areas. Loading it up with uh, liquid white, titanium white, and just use the corner of the brush. Get some stuff happening back there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come into some liquid white on a palette knife. I think that might work better. And I'm just going to tap it. Let it pull it off. Here and there. Where you get that look. A little bit more. You get that glary. That look of the water happening out there. A little bit more on this one over here. Here and there. Maybe that side's a little rougher here. I'll leave some space in between. A little bit of gaps. There are going to be some different things happening. Different size waves. You got that glow look going. Like it's rough out there. It's rough out there and uh, in the water line. Just barely tapping. Here and there and there and here and I step back because you got to get the full affect the full angle of the, the painting. Now what I'm going to do is use my uh, fan brush. I'm going to load it up with some uh, titanium white. In the same color that we did the mountains, the purple, I'm going to I'm going to lighten it some because I don't want it real dark. So I'm going to make some distant trees. It's almost a blue, light blue. Add a little bit more of the purple on both sides of the brush. And maybe there's some land back here where there's some trees growing. We're just going to tap down. What I'm doing now is I'm pulling up. I find, I found out that that works better because you always got the color that you're going to use anyways already on the canvas from the water. You just want to pull up here and there. Get that illusion of distant trees. There and there and there and here. Maybe that one comes all the way up. Maybe they get taller as they get closer to you over here. And leave some space in between. Pulling all the way up. Using the same paint. that I used. For the water. Maybe this gets bigger right in here. So 
Sometimes back here you can't really see it. Too, too much detail because it's too far away. I'll do the same thing over here. I'm going to start out in this corner here and pull up. Maybe some of these I could even get the illusion. that there's some trees that you can see the bark or the uh, each branch you turn the brush over pull some more of that color up and if you got it too dark you just go back in and go over it and it automatically will make it lighter for you. And here we'll put some, maybe these go taller here and then go smaller to nowhere. Off in the distance, you can't even tell. Maybe it's where the water's coming from, melting off the mountain. Melting off the mountain that's creating this pond or this lake, whatever you want it to be. It's your world. Okay, we got that happening. I think I'm going to add a little bit more color and put some bigger, bigger trees in here. Maybe these, you might be able to start to see I'm going to look up them. All I'm doing is tapping and using the corner. Maybe you got some happening there. What I'm doing is I'm just going to tap down and create that area that I want to start the tree. And I just tap and go across, back and forth. Turn the brush over, give you more color. all the way down. Just like that. Add some more color. Maybe give this guy maybe put another tree right here. More color. Tapping it. I'm going to try to stay out of the way. Turn the brush over. Pick up some more color. As it gets darker towards the base. Just like that. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, liquid clear. It's always good to use. Because uh, thin paint will stick to a thick paint every time. And since we got a lot of paint going on here. you'll see that that will happen that you'll have a harder time getting it to stick I just keep adding a little bit more paint as I see the canvas taken off just kind of blend that in maybe 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 we'll put another one over here. We're going to fill this in anyways. Just start it. And usually you start down from the top of the tree. You don't put anything. You leave some areas. Where there's some openings. Helps it look more real. And this you can come right down. Who knows. Not really worried about that right now. We're just trying to create that effect. Now that looks good enough for me. We're going to take that blender brush. Use the blender brush a lot. And we're going to tap this in. To give it that misty look. 
going to tap in some of that water line and that's okay because we're going to make that over on a distant these trees give that misty look to them plus with that white that's on there it's going to help here and there just tapping just want to create that illusion of water and a misty area just like that that gave it that look clean the brush off got to go into my palette knife I'm going to pull in some of that dark color again, the purple. Cut a roll across and we're going to find out. Put in our water, put in our line of our land. Just tapping. What we're going to do is we're going to pull that down. We're going to pull that down when we blend it in. I'm going to add some, a little bit more color. Just tapping it. Maybe the lane comes this way. That's all you got to do is bring it down. Just taking some of the excess off. Kind of pre-blending it before I actually do it with the brush. We want that darkness that I said I seen. And there's no right or wrong way. It's whatever you think, however you see things. I'm going to take that uh, fan brush, little fan brush. I cleaned it off. So I want to pick up this dark color in here and just pull it down. And what that's going to do is it's going to give the effect of the trees back there, the reflection of the trees. Plus, we want some of that darkness to stay in there because of the mountain. The mountain's there. And that kind of blends all that in. Gives you that look. Maybe here. Just tapping it and you finished. You can finish those lines. I didn't put it all the way across. Because when you're tapping this, it kind of blends it in and it picks up the paint to where you don't need to do that. And you can make this and change it however you see fit on whatever you see on whatever you like. Pull that down further. That gives you the the look of the trees. Maybe this one here. I'm going to tap in some of this. Bring it in over here. Just to finish that off some. Maybe that one comes down further. Look at your uh, your trees and how they look. If there are some of them coming down, you just take the end of your brush and bring it down. But all we're trying to do now is create an illusion of the way the water line would look. Step back, take a look at it, and you might go back and forth with the colors. Taking the blender brush again, I'm going to pull down like we did. Tap and pull down. Just want to grab that paint that's on there, and what you did with your reflections, and pull down. 
just like that. And just go barely across. Barely across this way. But what I see and what I'm going to do is pick up some more of that purple because this needs to be darker in here. It's closer to us the way we got the angle coming. And I'm adding more of it. Same thing on this side here. It might not be so much because of the angle. Kind of bringing that, poking that in some. Just like that. Take the fan brush, pull down the colors. Where you got the trees happening. Give that reflection. This one might not be so bad so much. So I'm just going to tap that in. We just want that maybe to be darker there. But here, who knows, maybe some of this would be covered in, but we had practice on it. Clean out that blender brush again, and we'll do the same thing what we did before. Pull down until you get that water line looking and go across. That dark water line. That I think should be there. Okay, we got that happening. And what I see is I'm going to put some more trees in, distant trees. I think that's a good look. Add some more of that liquid clear. That same blue. Maybe add some taller ones. some more liquid white, maybe a little bit of paint thinner, make it thin, and start out at the top and just tap it in. Turn your brush over, just tap it in until you get that look. Maybe it comes all the way down. Just like that. Come over to this side, we'll do the same thing. Make a big one right there. And just tap back and forth all the way down. Maybe it runs right in front of the other tree. Who knows? Step back and get that look. What you think. Okay, now. Now I'm going to start in with some land we got to put in. We got to put in trees, evergreen trees. And we're going to use... We're going to use the fan brush. To clean the fan brush off. Quarterless paint thinner. I'm going to mix some um, phthalo green, sap green, phthalo green, sap green, and need some liquid white to thin it out because it's kind of thick and we want to get this tree look going get all kinds of different the greens 
and we're just going to put in the water or the lay of the land or where we want the land to be. Since we want a trail to come through, I think we can start by putting putting it right there. Just tapping it, making it a little hilly. And this is where you can make your your painting and your land kind of go wherever you want. Adding some more on the fan brush and maybe here where this comes down maybe the path is here it starts and maybe this goes up here. Maybe it's got a hill. Maybe it's a steeper hill on this side. And by tapping that down like that, you get all kinds of things happening. And what's going to happen is, by the, putting this color on, we come back and highlight it with the yellows. It's going to make it pop. You don't even have to do anything. And uh, I hope you'll see what happens when we, after we fill this in. All I'm doing now, is filling in the lay of the land with dark colors. You're getting all this stuff happening by tapping. I hope you can see that at home because I'm not filling it all in. You want to leave some spots just like in nature where it's not filled in. But normally you want it darker by the edges, especially over up here. Because the way the sun is hitting and you pay attention to the lay of the land. Maybe it comes down like that. I'm going to grab some dark color over here. Do the same thing on this side. Maybe that comes right down like that. It's whatever you think. It's whatever you see. Maybe that comes down like that. And that pushes the other one back. And by tapping, we get all kinds of neat little grassy areas. that you might not get if you do it a different way. Just tapping it in. Just like that. Add some more liquid white. Got the greens going. Phthalo green, sap green. Maybe this hill is darker. And that's okay. It'll run right down in front. Like I said, we're going to highlight this. And hopefully you're going to see that really pop. We're just filling this in right now. This might take a while, but <laughs> uh, that's the way it goes. But that's this one here is a darker one. I'm using a dark color again. Maybe that one's in front. Load up with some liquid clear, some of that uh, phthalo green is darker than the sap green. Maybe this comes right down like that. Maybe that's right in the front. By doing that we pushed a lot of things back. right in front. We're going to cut all this in first and then we're going to run our trail in. We're going to cut the paint away from it and then put our paint, our trail in and then we'll come back, we'll highlight it and we'll know exactly where we want our, exactly where we want to put our trail. filling this in. This is going to be a nice nice grassy area. Well you'll see it. It's going to be it's going to be real sharp and uh, I think it's going to really look 
it's really going to pop. It's really going to stand out. Maybe down here. Got all kinds of different things happening. Colors. Maybe on this side. I'm not going to grab no paint. It's just going to be lighter. Maybe because the way it's that time of the day. Our trail is going to start down here because our trail maybe runs off over here to the corner around the side. You can't tell where it, where it goes. Maybe it goes down to a fishing hole that uh, somebody found. I'm just adding more color. When you highlight it too, you'll, you'll pay more attention to the lay of the land. But by doing this, it really does give you that look and all the textures and everything that's happening. I'm going to fill in some lighter color here for over here. Really gets you that grassy look. Just here and there and there and here. Come right down. really like this effect because it really gives you that grassy look. It's more sap green. I'm just loading the paintbrush up just to, just to fill it in. Maybe the closer it gets here the darker it gets. Just like that. Just like that. Come over here, same thing, dark. Maybe the trail comes right down. Maybe it's a maybe it's a bigger hill. If you see that, just put it in. Add some more liquid white. Some more color. Just like that. Here and there and there and here. like that. Make it dark. Want it dark? Helps when you blend it in. Just keep tapping it and just keep blending it in. get that dark look and it brings everything in a proper proper perspective of what you're trying to create just what you're trying to look just what you're trying to look for just keep filling in the darker colors like I said once you do this you're going to come back with the lighters the lighter color and it's going to it's going to come right off of that going to pop right off of the, the shading, the yellow. Maybe the trail, who knows, but we're going to fill this in because we can always, we'll finish it off later. Okay, we got that happening. Add some more of the colors. Start another hill here. Maybe one back here. I just tap that in. We'll blend that in like that and that'll give you that look. Tap, tap, tap. Lay of the land where the trail would be. Maybe that 
that peaks down further. Who knows? But I'm trying to blend some of this color in now. Some of these greens that we want. Using a palette knife. Add some more liquid clear. Load it up and tap it in. That got nice and dark. Tapping, tapping, tapping. All the way down. And all the way up. More color. Get it darker over here. Darker here. Now we're not too worried, too much worried about our trail yet because we can cut that in. It's okay if we paint it over it. Just get everything happening. All dark colors. Still using the same color. All the greens. Phthalo green. Sap green. This is going to be uh, kind of a summery, summery mountain trail. Just put all that in. Get all those things happening, all those angles, and all the different textures that are coming off your brush. Just tapping it down like that. And just tapping it in. Get it to where all the different shades and different things that are happening in nature, how they're different colors, they're darker. Just here and there. And I know I said it before, and there and here. Keep tapping it in. We'll fill all that in, get all the angles in. When we highlight it. Just like that, all the way down. Well, that's some grassy area. That's a big, big painting. Okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to put some trees in. Put some evergreen trees in. The same colors. Sap green. Halo green. And we're using the liquid clear. Need to have it real liquidy for it to go on. Loading it up on the fan brush. Maybe in our world, since there's a trail going down here, we'll start out with some trees. Since I got the darker color, I want to come closer because that's the way it look in, looks in nature. You got the darker colors closer to you. I'm just putting this down like this to give me an idea of where I want the tree. And just start tapping it back and forth. I hope you can see that at home or wherever you're watching this from. The further down, the harder you tap. If you run out of paint, turn your brush over. All the way down. All the way down, just like that. 
had more paint. Maybe there's one. I'm going to leave that little opening there because I like that back there. So I'm going to put another tree maybe right there. Coming down. Just like that. I never start all at the very top because look at trees in nature. They're, they got some stuff missing. Maybe this one isn't a big tree. It's thinner. And it's thinner because I don't want to cover up those trees. And it's your world and you can make it however you want. And by doing that with that color in the background with those blues and the trees, it automatically gives it that shadow and that distant look that they're behind. Maybe, maybe, maybe in our world. I'm going to put another smaller tree right here. Tapping it down. Just like that. Go right across. Maybe this one's a smaller one too. Maybe it comes right down. Just like that. Looks pretty good. Now we'll we'll finish this side off, then we'll go to that one, that side. Now we'll put a smaller one here, because you don't want them to have be all the same height. It just looks better that way, I think. But you can do it however you want. It's your world, and if that's the way you see it, and that's exactly how it should be. fill that in down there. That kind of brings that land up automatically because we had that space in there. Let me put a bigger one right up here. Maybe this one goes right up. Almost off the canvas. Start out, tap. Just the angle of the brush. Back and forth. However you think the evergreen tree looks. Just tap it in that way. Just like that. That looks pretty good. I'll tell you what I think I'm going to do. I think I'm going to have a tree hanging over. So I'm going to start out by tapping up here. Just bringing the limbs down. Turning the brush over. Maybe this one's even closer to us. That's just coming right over. It's a tree that you really can't see a lot of, but it's there. It's covering, it's in the picture. Um, that's the fun, fun part about it. Maybe this comes right down to some of the trees we just painted. But we need a darker color. Since it's closer, back and get that look of what you're looking for. Add more paint. Maybe that comes right down. right over. 
filled right in. Maybe this. Where it looks thicker and it's coming over the trail because you're walking you're going through the woods you got to think of little pictures and create different scenes in your own mind on just what is happening okay on this side we're going to put a tree right here tapping it Try to stay out of the way. All the way down. That's one. Maybe there's... Maybe there is a big one right there. Just tapping it. I may putting this one this way and tapping it harder it automatically pushes the other one behind it. Still got to put the trail in, cover the grassy area. Maybe, maybe, maybe here there's a little tree right here. There is now. Just tap it, barely tapping it. You'll see the paint come off of it on the canvas. Then you know how hard to tap, how much pressure to put to create that. So just do that. Paint that like that. I like that over there. We're going to put one more here. Just like that. All the way down. Just tapping it. Back and forth. I hope you can see that. Because it's really showing up good with that blue. That blue on the water. Just like that. Now, we'll make another one here. Just like that. Just back and forth. like that, make it darker, push down. There's some evergreen trees too that you can push up and you have that look of the evergreen tree. But you know, those are different different trees. Different trees that, that happen. Just like that. Okay. Maybe I'm gonna use some more liquid white. Get into some darker color. Maybe in our world, let's try to. I like this in here too. So I'm, I'm going to put a taller one here. But I want to keep it kind of thin. Since they're not all the same. Just make it happen like that. Maybe it gets thicker as it goes down, and that's okay. We can do that. Just like that. I'm stepping back. Getting to view. I think we'll come the trail will come around there. Be wider here. Maybe I might have some same thing happening on this side with that 
with the tree of the tree look. Maybe this one will start up here and come down and we'll fill it in. Just like that. We'll start branches down here lower. Just like that. Tapping, tapping. Maybe where you picked up too much paint, just tap on it a little bit more. That'll make it thicker, that'll make it thinner, that take the paint away. You can add the paint. Just like that. All the way down. We'll keep that stuff happening in the back, in the background. That looks good. Maybe, maybe here, maybe there, maybe who knows where. I think I'm going to put another tree right here. Littler tree because that trail's going around by the tree, I think I want it. So I'm just tapping it. And then get out of your way. Just like that. Oh, oh heck, I think I'm going to put another tree here. This would be a lesson on painting trees. Uh, back and forth. Tapping. Just like that. That trail goes right around the corner. Adding some more green. I think I want to put another tree in up here. Just tapping, just like that, all the way down. You got threes going. Okay, I'm going to put that coming over, I guess. Add some more of the color, load it up on the fan brush, a lot of greens. It's pretty loaded. That's okay because you're going to use it. <laughs> and on this one, we'll come right in over here. Let's say this one don't come, don't start as far. Don't come as far as the other one did over towards the middle of the, the painting. Just like that. Looking pretty good. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. We're going to cover these trees up here a little bit, but that's okay because that's the way it looks in nature. It's going to be filled in. Maybe it comes right down. Who knows? Right down into the green. Just fill that in. Just like that. Okay, I'm stepping back and taking a look at it and thinking to myself, looks pretty good. Tap in some more color down here, fill some of these light areas in. Where we might want the trail to be. We'll come in and highlight in a minute. But you put that dark color on and the light color goes on and you automatically have the shadows. Okay, we got a lighter going in there got that look going on there. I think it's time for it's time for to scrape in some twigs and clean it off the palette knife. Take the palette knife and take the edge and you can just scrape in things. This we got the liquid white on there.
make all kinds of things happening in here. You can even put your tree branches in and your the tree. All the way up. Make all kinds of little things happening down here, little grassy areas, twigs and I hope you can see that. I hope you can see that because it really It really didn't take much, but use this and not a liner brush where it takes a lot of effort and too much stuff to try to create, try to paint on there. It would take, a, it would take too long. Now what we're going to do is we're going to load up some yellow color. Let me pick up some yellow. This is just regular yellow. Cadian yellow. I'm loading a lot up. A little bit of liquid clear on the yellow using a two inch brush. I'm going to load it up with the yellow. Because that color that we got on it already. And I use some, uh, you have to thin it out. It's got to make it pop on that green, just like that. And we want to find out where our light source is and just tapping it. Just like that. Add some white, liquid white, both sides, just like that. And we'll tap it just like that. And if you can see that, you get the lay of the land. And with that white, you get that look. It comes right down. Right down into... Right down into the path area. I'm going to shave this in like this first. And then we'll scrape in where we want our path to be, but for right now, we're just doing this, highlighting the different areas, trying to create this, this look of the grass, grassy, grassy area, highlighted look. Just like that. Shade all that in, but you know, you want to leave some of it darker. Because in nature, you're going to have that look. Where it shows the lay of the land, and some of it's highlighted more than others. Like this one right here, we can pop that in maybe a little bit more. Maybe make it brighter up there on the very top. Add some more yellow. All the way down. Yellow and white. Maybe over here, maybe this is hitting right on top here. Maybe it's just zinging off of that corner. Just that area right there. Comes right down. Just popping off of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a little bit more white, tapping it. And I want it to tap, I want it to pop just a little bit more. Maybe this is popping just a little bit down here. Just tapping it in. some more yellow. 
maybe back here maybe it goes right down add some more white titanium white liquid white more liquid white tap more white tap that really gets it each time you load it up you get some more and just tap it in maybe it goes all the way under and you just tap it, tap it away from the the ledge the edge that you made and it kind of blends it in kind of gives you that look I'm gonna leave this color on here because I'm gonna come over here I'm going to leave some dark areas in here. And I just want to take what I had on there, use what I had, tap it in, leave that dark area. It's almost like when you're painting. It's almost like when you're painting a wave. How you do that? How you leave it dark? Maybe back here. Maybe right underneath the trees it might be might be zinging a little bit from the light. Leave some dark areas in there. Don't tap it all in. Here and there and there and here. Just like that. That's the way it would look. I might grab some of that same look. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Because I like that. I like that look of uh, it zinging a little bit. Back in that corner. Maybe this comes all the way down. Just like that. I'm going to add some more over here. Like I said, you can leave that space. You leave those gaps in there. Maybe this comes down into here. I'm just filling it in right now. I'm just bringing some color in. And you'll see that once I start tapping on it, now I'm going back over it. And getting the lines in the lay of the land in different angles and different areas where like I said you don't want to shade it all in you want to have different textures where it's lighter darker where the Sun might be hinting and where it might not be leave the areas where it's dark put that stuff down originally now when you put this on there you get all kinds of little things happening you got things it looks like it looks like grass and field and all kinds of darkness what you want dark dark where it's the, the grass is the closest to you like that. Now we'll come to the other side. Add some color in here. Leave some of that dark. All the way down. Get some yellows. Some whites. Maybe do that up there. Maybe come down in here. Maybe 
just like that. Even those dark areas in there. It's always a good thing. Half it right down. Right on the edge. Light and dark and dark and light. Okay, now I'm going to take some of that yellow again. Some liquid clear. Maybe pop in. Maybe pop in some brighter colors. A little brighter, a little brighter yellow. I think I want. At least a brighter color in there. Maybe it's got to be brighter along here because because of the way the light is hitting. I still want it to look I still want it to pop I still want it to have that look to it back and look at the angles and just touch it up wherever you think it might look like it needs some TLC really looks dark over there. What I gotta do is I gotta come back in with the fan brush though. And what I did was I came over on this tree here and chopped it off. So I have to come and put the tree back in the front. Back in front of that ledge. Well you can keep going and keep working on these. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and get my palette knife, and we're going to try to scrape in where we're going to have that trail coming from. Maybe it's coming in from here. Maybe it's coming here. Maybe it goes over there. Maybe it goes over here. Comes in there, goes over, just like that. Now we're going to take 
fan brush. The little fan brush, I'm cleaning it off with some of this paint thinner. I'm going to come in with some brown liquid clear, thin it out. Odorless paint thinner. Want to get it a little bit inky? Load it up on the fan brush. I want to come in with a trail. Just like that. And the trail starts from back here. Anywhere you can't even see it goes around the bend. I'm coming across the straight lines. Just because I think that's the way in nature it would look. Maybe it goes over there. Who knows? comes over there. Goes off the edge there. And it comes back in front here. And it gets more and more. It gets larger as it gets closer to you. Almost, just like that. Add up some more color. Want it to be darker the closer it gets to you. Maybe it goes just like that. Okay, I'm going to take some of this paint off. I'm going to come back in and touch this up where I started the trail. And as you see the trail, it's got to be lighter. Lighter the further away it is. And as it gets darker, it's got to get closer to you. And that's what you're looking for. Just like that. You know what, I don't know if I'm going to do anything to that, because I really like that look. really like that look of the trail, except for, I'm going to come in and clean a palette, uh, fan brush off. I'm going to load up with some green colors, and I'm going to tap that. I'm going to tap this right down in. right down into the I'm going to put the trail right into the land and the way you're going to do that by tapping that color down right down into the land Let me do it with this brush here that has the colors on there. Just going to tap that down. Just going to bring that land. And set that trail.
right into the right into the ground. We don't want it to look like it's sitting on top. that down taps that in there I don't know this is a tough one I'm just about getting done when I add some more color some more yellowish. Maybe it comes right down there. Maybe that comes right there. Just back and forth. Maybe that peaked right down into the into the trail. That comes right down. Comes right down over the trail. Pretty good. I'm uh, pretty happy with that. A little bit more lighter colors here. More white. Tapping it. Popped it off some. I'm going to add a little bit in that one corner over here just because I think there might be more. More coming from this corner here by the light. Maybe right here. See what happens when you start doing it. start seeing stuff and you start going, oh, gotta put a little bit more on, it's gotta be whiter. Just like that. Trail goes around there, we got the trees coming in. Almost a completed painting here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap this down here and kind of finish this off where it's Maybe I didn't get all the way. So you just pull the canvas away from the bottom part of the your easel. Just fill it in. I'm going to take a dry brush, two inch brush. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to tap this. Still going to pick up that paint. It's going to give you a different look. Just like that. It's going to give you that different effect. That look you're looking for. Just filling it in. Here and there. There and here. 
And I think that's a completed painting. So I'm going to grab some lighter colors that we used. Maybe the greens. Use a liner brush and some paint thinner. Make it an ink consistency. And I sign mine in the bottom corner here. Some people use their last name. Some people use their initials. And you can use whichever you prefer. And also, put in the year. The year it was painted is always good. Well, that's my scene. That's my painting. It's a larger one than what I no normally do. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got a feel for it. And uh, I have more videos that I'm making um, on uh, volume two. And I hope you come back and see me. Have a nice day. Bye.